So uh, this is the Kirkton Glen. I've been stepping up from Darnley Fisher on foot about an hour ago. And uh, I've come up here to find somewhere to sling my hammock. So this is just a view of the evening sun just catching the hills. And let's see where I can sleep for the night. Finally set up, got the bunny wee spot. You can see my tarp there, and I've built a little rock car so I can uh, have a little fire to keep warm. And, uh, so the next morning now, and uh, I'm just walking a bit further up the Coaxing Glen. I'm going to walk over the top of the hills here and back down to Darnacosia this morning. So uh, <clears throat> before I get up onto the open hill and uh, pick up any more of this breeze that's probably just starting to give you a bit of wind cut. I just want to stop and say a couple of things about, um, well, I suppose, Anatar, I suppose, no self. Like, uh, being outdoors, one of the things that you can do is you can let go of that sense of yourself. Now, I don't mean, uh, um, you know, so you can sort of suddenly become enlightened because you're outside. That would be silly of me. Uh, but um, by exploring some of the things we've been talking about, by um, noticing uh, impermanence more and more deeply, allowing ourselves to just feel that uh, continuous sense of change um, by uh, opening out the senses, by um, really, uh, yeah, really connecting with the, 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 the sense experience and, and sort of questioning the boundary. I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting thing you can do. I find this particularly strongly with the auditory sense. Listening is probably a bit of a doorway into this. Um, <clears throat> as you as you feel your way into the, the sensory world. And you can just sort of recognize that that sensation is just as much part of you uh, and, and you as you are it. And that really you can't quite define where the boundary is. Um, <coughs> and this is true of all the senses. So by just very, very gently relaxing into this kind of awareness, um, the, the uh, the permeability of the boundary between ourselves and our world starts to become much more apparent. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, I, I briefly looked at uh, using the, the three elements, uh, well, I mean, all the elements are there, but the earth, water, and uh, either air or space in, in terms of sky are another way of uh, sort of exploring the um, exploring the boundary between what we consider to be ourselves and what we consider to be our world and just recognizing that there's a, a felt permeability in that non-separateness and that non-separateness that felt non-separateness also is a continually changing a continually evolving um, uh, an ever-shifting ground that, that, uh, that, that we inhabit um, and this, of course, is set against the practicalities that, uh, well, last night it was quite a cold frost, so my hands were quite cold when I was trying to make my breakfast this morning and pack up the tent. And, um, yeah, just sort of ordinary discomforts and uh, being slightly exerted walking up this hill. So this kind of permeability of, of, of mind and body and heart is, is sort of set against a, a, uh, um, a sort of a materiality and a, and a practicality at the same time. And I think that's one of the things that I find inspiring about it. <clears throat> um, so yeah, we can, uh, by letting go of a sense of fixedness, um, recognizing impermanence, recognizing these qualities that are intangible and, and noticing that although there are objective realities to what we call ourselves, that actually we're also just as much a part of this constantly moving sort of sea of, of phenomena. Um, th there's a release happens. There's a, there's a sort of release happens in the mind. Um, uh, a sort of a sense of, 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 of freedom whereby these 
practical uh, difficulties um, to take their place in a bigger picture. Um, and in the same way, uh, I mean, I find when I'm out, sometimes I've just, my mind has just become sort of caught up in some aspect of my, of my life. Um, and then at other times I can just sort of release that. And it's not like it's no longer there. It's just that it's sort of now free within a much bigger context of experience, a much bigger canvas uh, of, of experience. So we can also just let go of and free our mental and emotional states into a sort of an undefined um, openness, I suppose. At least temporarily, you know, at least temporarily. At least get a, get a hint of what that's like. <coughs> Of course, then the important thing is not to try to um, attach to that sense of what that's like, as if we can make that the whole of our experience. We've just got to sort of keep very, very gently opening up to that aspect of experience. Keep just sort of letting it in, as it were. Um, and I think that takes time. That's why it's quite nice to, I find, certainly coming outdoors, coming to nature for significant periods of time. And the... The, the sort of the ups and downs of that experience start to become contextualised in something bigger, and the ups and downs of my mind start to become contextualised in something bigger. And they do that not because I'm trying to make it happen. It's just sort of a natural part of the process of releasing and easing into a uh, yeah, a, an unfolding sensory aliveness of nature, and to the simple beauty of the moment.